It's a time to display the richness and diversity of Spanish and Latin American culture, a month for wearing ethnic costumes, waving flags, marching in parades, and attending cocktail parties. But it should be much more than that. This is not Hispanic Fiesta Month. It's Hispanic Heritage Month. We should put an accent on the word heritage. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with marching in a parade. But first, you have to know why you're marching. Just what are we celebrating? Unfortunately, many Latinos, through no fault of their own, are unaware of their heritage. If their education is based on American history, they probably don't know the accomplishments of their often overlooked ancestors. But Latinos have a long history of contributions to North American society, from those who built the first city to those who died and are still dying, fighting to defend this nation and our freedom, a history that has been left out of the textbooks and the classrooms. To many Latinos, this is mostly a time to party like there's no mañana. And there's nothing wrong with that, as long as we also use this month to dig out the roots of our, the roots of our heritage and remind the world that our ancestors played a major role in changing the course of North American history. The United States is as much Hispanic as it is English, because, because it is from La Cuna de America, America's cradle, from the West Indies, that the United States was born. For Latinos, this should be a time to recharge our ethnic batteries, a time to stock up on historical ammunition, to arm ourselves against those who would attack us with stereotypes or misconceptions. Some corrections have been made recently in some schools offering multicultural education programs, but generally teaching of the role of Hispanics in U.S. history is very limited. That's because American history has always been written as if this country began when the British settled in Jamestown, Virginia in 1607 and the Pilgrims stepped ashore in Plymouth Rock on 1620. And that's a blatant distortion of reality. But forget the history books. This distortion is nowhere more visible than in Jamestown, Virginia, where I spent some time taking pictures this summer. Jamestown has a subtitle. They call it America's Birthplace. But there's only one thing, one thing wrong with that. San Agustin, Florida was established by Spanish explorers in 1565, almost 42 years earlier. In fact, Juan Ponce de Leon was there in 1513. He didn't stay because he found the fountain of youth and he took many barrels of water back to Puerto Rico. But Ponce de Leon was, and his men were the first Europeans to land on what is now US territory. It was Pedro Menendez de Aviles and his men who finally settled San Augustine in 1565. It is well documented that the first Thanksgiving in the United States did not take place at Plymouth Rock in 1620, but at San Agustin on September 8, 1565, when the Spaniards celebrated the first mass, Catholic mass, on U.S. soil and shared a Thanksgiving feast with the natives. When you go to Jamestown, they tell you that you are visiting the first permanent British settlement in the territory that later became the United States but they neglect to tell you that there were other settlements built by the Spaniards decades before. Last May, President Bush and the Queen of England went to Jamestown to celebrate its 400th anniversary. It made a lot of headlines, but there were a few headlines, very few headlines, when San Augustine celebrated its 442nd anniversary just in September. When I visited San Augustine this summer, I had a chance to interview Harry Metz, the official historian at the Fountain of Youth Archaeological Park. So what's with Jamestown claiming that it is America's birthplace? I asked him. He smiled and looked at me and he said, we tell a joke around here. When they were building Jamestown, we were going through urban renewal. Even if we are born in this country, sometimes Latinos are treated like foreigners, recent arrivals. But the truth is that our ancestors arrived here first and that many parts of the United States were explored by Spanish conquistadors almost 100 years before the British arrived. They established settlements in Florida, California, and throughout the Southwest. They discovered the Mississippi River, the Grand Canyon, San Francisco Bay, and many other North American landmarks. Yet everything that happened here before 1607 has always been played down or ignored by North American historians. And the same goes for the contributions we made during the last two centuries. Three centuries of hidden Hispanic heritage. That's the subject that we should be discussing on Hispanic Heritage Month. 
This is the time to fill the gaps in the history books and show the rest of society that this country is as much Spanish as it is English. Our roots are firmly planted here. It's a time to celebrate and educate. It's a chance not only to rejoice over the beauty of our music, language, and culture, but to recognize that this country was not explored, settled, and colonized from east to west, as we are often led to believe, but from south to north. It's a time to remind everyone that in the 16th century, it was Spaniards who first explored more than two thirds of what is now US territory. Unlike Black History Month in February, which is devoted to seminars and exhibits and lectures to recognize the achievements and contributions of African American historical figures, which, which also have been left out of the history books. This month, there are very few opportunities to discuss Hispanics in US history. The difference is substance. On Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15 to October 15, there are many parties and banquets, most of which have very little to do with Hispanic heritage. The month was designated by Congress in 1988 to replace the Hispanic Heritage Week, which had been observed starting on September 15 since 1968. It's an awkward month covering the second half of September and the first half of October, but it was designated that way to include the September Independence Days of several Latin American countries and the October 12th anniversary of the discovery of America. On September 15, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua celebrate their independence. On September 16, it's Mexico's time to celebrate, and September 18 is Chile's Independence Day. But here in the United States, sometimes we can be our own worst enemies. Instead of sponsoring educational programs and using them to instill pride among young Latinos, demand respect from the political establishment, and obtain recognition from the media, Latino leaders settle for lip service and worthless proclamations from the politicians. Even the Hispanic parades, where at least there is an opportunity to showcase the typical music, customs, and folklore of Latin America, are usually turned into campaign rallies by politicians who rarely deal with the needs of Latinos. Nowadays, Latino Americans are more than 44 million strong in the United States and the fastest growing segment of the U.S. population. We're a community confronting many barriers to our advancement, poorer, more discriminated against, and less educated and skilled than non-Hispanic whites. But when we listen to historians outline our achievements, we find many reasons to feel proud. Some people fail to recognize Latino contributions to the freedoms we enjoy today, but many Latinos were among those who made the ultimate sacrifice so we could celebrate our 4th of July. We may be underrepresented in politics, colleges, major U.S. corporations, but in the field of combat, Latinos are always overrepresented. Hispanics participated in the very birth of our nation, the U.S. War of Independence. Most people don't know that the war against the British was also fought by Spaniards, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Venezuelans, and Mexicans, and that they won major battles in places like Mobile, Alabama, and Pensacola, Florida. The money, supplies, ammunition, and soldiers that Spain and the Spanish colonies gave to the 13 British colonies was of utmost importance in bringing about the successful conclusion of the American Revolution. And from that point on, Hispanics have fought in every U.S. war in a greater proportion than the percentage of the population. More than 10,000 Latinos fought in the Civil War. Thousands of Latinos died in the two world wars and Korea. In Vietnam, Latinos suffered 20% of the casualties, although we were less than 5% of the U.S. population. There are thousands of Hispanic surnames on the wall of the Vietnam Memorial in Washington. Now, we are almost 15% of the population, but during the Persian Gulf War, it was estimated that between 36 and 40% of our combat troops were Latinos. In every war, Latinos have fought with courage and unquestioned loyalty, winning numerous medals. Latinos have won 43 Congressional Medals of Honor, more than any other ethnic group. There are many other areas where Latinos have made significant achievements, from the corporate world to sports, and to many other professions. Our entertainers are conquering Broadway and Hollywood. Our scientists have won the Nobel Prize, and our writers have won the Pulitzer Prize, and their books are being turned into movies. We've had Latino astronauts, a Surgeon General. Even Coca-Cola had a Latino president. And what would Major League Baseball be like without Latinos? 
These are the role models that should be identified during Hispanic Heritage Month. Yesterday's conquistadores are today's conquerors of North American society. By exposing our Hispanic roots, this month can spark our desire to make sure that our proud heritage is no longer hidden. It is often said that to know where you're going, you have to know who you are and where you came from. But our education system fails to teach Latino students where they came from, making it harder for them to understand who they are. Young Latinos may not have many role models, but it's not because they don't exist. It's because they don't know them. Education, our education system, has denied them the access to their own heroes, their own history, and thus their own future. For example, do you know that Hernando Cortes, the conqueror of the Aztec Empire, commanded an expedition that established the first settlement in Southern California in 1536? And what about Juan de Onate, who was not Spanish, but the son of Spanish settlers born in Guadalajara, Mexico? He led expeditions from the Colorado River to the plains of Kansas and colonized the territory now known as New Mexico. Do you know about Hernando de Soto, who discovered and explored the Mississippi River in 1541? American history books tell us that Lewis and Clark were the first white men to see the North American wilderness because they headed the first overland expedition, American overland expedition, from the east to the Pacific coast and back from 1804 to 1806. They want you to believe that this country was explored and settled from east to west, but it happened more than 250 years before Lewis and Clark from the Caribbean and from Mexico. De Soto and his men explored the territory that later became Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi and Arkansas and Louisiana. De Soto was buried in the Mississippi River long before the British landed. Do you know about Bernardo de Galvez, the namesake of Galveston, Texas? From 1779 to 1781, his troops scored many victories in the South and the Southeast and kept the British away from George Washington's flanks. American history also fails to recognize the contributions of Latino literary figures and patriots uh, like Puerto Rico's Ramon Emeterio Betances and Cuba's Jose Marti, who lived in New York and made tremendous contributions from here toward the independence of their homelands. And what about Carlos Finlay, a Cuban doctor who studied and lived in Philadelphia and cleared the way for the completion of the Panama Canal when he discovered that yellow fever was transmitted by mosquitoes. They say that history is written by the winners and it was the British who ultimately took over this country. But we should question why history books depict Spanish explorers as people who did not settle and colonize, but merely explored and sought gold and killed Indians, while the English are de described as pious, industrious, people who came to build homes and establish and raise families. This is called the Black Legend, which was censorship of Spanish-American history, and it was used by the British and the Dutch and the French as they began to raid those things that were Spanish. But in the first 50 years of the Spanish presence in the New World, the Spanish built hundreds of cities and colonized half the continent. Don't get me wrong, the Spanish did a lot of horrible things, but they also did a lot of wonderful things. The British never discovered, they rediscovered, they never created, they recreated because everything that they came to do had already been done. Just look at all the North American landmarks, cities and states that have Spanish names. American history fails to recognize those who discovered and named them. For proof of Hispanic presence in North America, all one has to do is look at a map and notice that seven states have Spanish names. The same goes for rivers, cities, the Pacific Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, the Grand Canyon, even a glacier in Alaska. Why are they named in Spanish? Because the Spanish was spoken and taught in North America long before a word of English was uttered here. Those who oppose bilingualism and try to make English the country's official language will never be able to rewrite history completely because even some states where English has been declared the official language have names in Spanish. Florida, Florida, California, Arizona, Colorado. What are they going to do, change the names of those states? Most Americans speak Spanish every day and they don't even know it. There are many Spanish words that have become part of the American vocabulary. Rodeo, Lasso, Los Angeles, San Francisco. They may not pronounce it right, 
but they're speaking Spanish. Some people just want to be, us to believe that their ancestors spoke only English when they got off the boat at Ellis Island. They refused to recognize that their ancestors published newspapers in foreign languages and distributed them in little Italy's and Poland's and Germany's and Russia's. They refused to acknowledge that throughout North American history, signs and even government documents in other languages have been prevalent. Yet store signs in Espanol, the first European language spoken here, are a source of controversy. While I was shopping in San Agustin recently, I found a store selling a t-shirt that said, welcome to America, now speak English. Not in San Agustin, I cried out. Even the celebrations of Hispanic heritage are controversial. While other ethnic groups can freely celebrate their pride in their heritage, Latinos are held to a different standard. When we try to preserve our culture and language, we're unjustly considered un-American. As for being American, let's remember that even the name America comes from south of the border because long before it was used to describe the United States, it applied only to South America, the part of the continent that was explored by its namesake, Amerigo Vespucci, an Italian who self sailed for Spain. When US citizens called themselves American and looked down on their hemispheric neighbors, let's remind them that in the Caribbean and from the Mexican border to the tip of South America, there are millions of Latinos who are just as American as they are. When they try to categorize you as a race, Tell them that most Latinos are proud of their Spanish, African, and native uh, and Latin American roots, and that many others are just as proud of their Asian and Jewish heritage. But tell them that unlike American history, in Latin America, history doesn't hide the slaughter of the natives. Tell them that when we celebrate the discovery of the new world, we are also conscious that it marks the beginning of the Holocaust and the opening of the gates to slavery. And when they get offensive and they tell Latinos that they only come here for the mighty American dollar, first we should remind them that thousands of Latinos have died defending this nation. And then we should tell them that when the dollar became the basic unit of money in the United States in 1792, it was modeled after the Spanish dollar, which had already been widely circulated in North America. So if you are a Latino and they try to tell you that history will never be corrected, Tell them that the Latino population already makes the United States the fifth largest Hispanic country in the world. Tell them that we are already the largest minority, a majority in the Bronx, and that soon we will have enough people and political power to make sure that all American children are taught the complete history of the United States. And if they ask you how long you and your people have been in this country, tell them that it's been several hundred years. And if they ask you how long you have been an American, tell them, hey, all my life. We should express our pride and gratitude for living in the world's greatest nation. But we should also teach our fellow Americans a little history about our contributions. Since before this place was a nation, we played an important part in making this nation great. Yet racism and ethnic discrimination have affected the accuracy of North American history. And that same inaccurate history has contributed to even more prejudice and discrimination. In these times when racial and ethnic tensions are tearing apart the social fabric of the nation, multicultural education is the only way to come to terms with our differences and develop mutual respect and tolerance for those who have traditions that are different from our own. By planting the seeds of knowledge among young Latinos, giving them access to their own history and their own heroes, we can make sure that they march forward with a sense of pride and self-esteem. And by teaching non-Latino students more about their, the ancestors of their Latino classmates, we can promote social harmony. Our American children should know more about the contributions of their, Sp of their ancestors, Spanish, British, African, Italian, Jewish, German, you name it. Ethnic pride should not be allowed to dissolve in the so-called American melting pot. Instead, let's have a salad bowl in which each ingredient retains its own ethnic flavor. This is the month when we raise our hopes and aspirations, when Latinos march together in parades to scream and shout about our pride in our heritage. But this is also the time to correct historical injustices. Let's put an accent on the word heritage.